So we all know you've played football, so you know better than anybody else uh, how sports can impact a, a young person's life. Why is it so important to try and make sports work during the time that we're going through? Well, there are lots of reasons. You know, I think being in school and participating in extracurricular activities are incredibly important. I hope we all realize now and appreciate more uh, the benefits of education and sports in, in our lives. It, uh, I think that sports in particular are about uh, teaching life skills, helps you build character, helps you build grit, resilience, toughness, the, the uh, competitiveness and, and the teamwork skills that you're going to need to get through life. And those are, those are the virtues of sports. But I think in a COVID world, we understand even more so the physical and mental health benefits of being able to stay active, to have hope, have something to look forward to. You know, understand for young people, uh, sports in many cases have been the, the dedicated effort of their lives. This is the most important thing in their lives. And uh, I think they deserve to have a chance to get out there on the field, on the court, uh, on the course, and, and have a chance to prove themselves. And, and also at the same time, as adults, you know, we need to be responsible and make sure that we're creating a safe environment for them uh, to do this so that it'll be successful. Uh, I might also add that, you know, let's think about this in the big, in the big picture. We know that COVID is a threat. We know that 3,600 people have died in Ohio from it. But also, the median age of death is 80 years of age. And we also know that from the, the statistics, it doesn't hit children as hard. Uh, as it does older adults or, or people with, with uh, physical ailments. So we, we know that we can make this safe. I think the kids should deserve a chance to prove it. I was going to say, that kind of brings me to my next point. We've heard the CDC guidelines and recommendations. We're all wearing masks in grocery stores, and kids will either start 100% virtually or in a hybrid capacity. But you can't be socially distant on a football field. So how do you make that work and how do you balance the two, the safety, but still playing? Yeah, look, there are uh, a lot of protocols you can put around the game uh, when you're off the field. Uh, there's no doubt that for moments uh, on the field in a contact sport that, that you increase the risk of spread. But I also think in the aggregate, you have to look at what the other alternative is. If you don't give children in-person educational opportunities, if you don't have extracurricular activities for them after school, it's not like they're just gonna go home and sit in a room and wear a mask. They're going to be doing something. The question is, do we want them in a highly structured environment with adult supervision uh, where they're doing these things or do we just want them out there on their own? I think the answer to that question is pretty easy, that the risks of having them together and doing sports in a regulated, supervised, structured environment is much better than what they might do on their own without that structure. And I think in the aggregate, that makes it safer. I would also argue this, that you're creating an incentive for hundreds of thousands of young people. And when you add their parents and coaches, maybe millions of Ohioans to wear a mask and keep each other safe so that they can play and that they can have a season. And I think that you turn a whole group of people into safety advocates uh, in, in all of those minutes that they're not on the field because they know how important it is to keeping them on the field, keeping them in, the, in play uh, if they can avoid the spread of the virus. Yeah, it gives them something. I was at a football practice today and that's exactly what a head coach said to me. He echoed the same things you said. Now on the other side of it, we just saw the MAC it was the first division one conference to postpone fall sports. In any way, does what college is doing does that have an effect or make you think, well, if college is postponing, how can we have high school? Does it, do the two play off of each other? Well, I think that there are always a lot of different issues that go into uh, those conversations. Those are also financial issues for some of these major colleges because the Big Ten, for example, and, and other uh, Power Five conferences canceled uh, their games with the MAC schools it costs them at least $11 million in revenue, making it very hard for them to sustain that sport without that revenue. And so there are a lot of factors that go into it. Look, 
none of us know exactly how this will work out. We don't know when we send children back to school how it will work out. We don't know when we, we do sports, uh, particularly contact sports in the fall, how that will work out. Um, but I think the kids deserve a chance. I think they deserve a chance to try. And I also believe that the evidence of what we've been doing with non-contact sports and the practices, by the way, these high school football teams and soccer teams have been practicing together throughout the summer. We've seen uh, uh, pretty good results with that. And so I think some of the early evidence leads us to believe that this can be done safely. Let's not forget about it. There is a need a constant reminder. There is a risk. There's a risk of doing this. Um, as a football player, I can tell you, if you play that sport, there's a risk every time you walk on the field that something uh, detrimental to your health is going to happen. Uh, the question is, everybody has to make a judgment call. Is the worth risk it? Or is the risk worth it, I should say. Um, uh, and and we, all have to, uh, we all have to take those factors in consideration. It, it may be that if you, know, you have a loved one at home who's recovering from lung cancer surgery that look, it just isn't gonna make sense for your family to do it because of the risk associated with it. But if you're in a family of healthy people uh, who don't have those uh, underlying risks, uh, it, it, it may make a lot more sense for you. Um, and I, you know, we all have to use our judgment. We all have to, to work at this together. Look, we're trying to teach teamwork on the field. It's gonna take teamwork off the field to wear those masks, stay, di stay distanced so you can have a season. Now, I've been told you're a major part of helping the OHSAA with their proposal and return to play. Is that true? Uh, I've tried to be a great resource to them, uh, to be an encourager for what I think they need to do to make the, the game safer so that uh, all games, all com competitions safer. And so I hopefully, hopefully they feel I've been a good resource. What did you do uh, as a resource to them? Uh, what, what things did you say? And how did you guys ultimately come up with the, the six games and then everybody in the playoffs? Well, look, that's their call. Um, I just tried to, to let them know what health experts are saying. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are saying that when you get later into November, uh, later in the year, when people start coming back inside more without the fresh air flow, that, that the risk goes up. And so the, I believe, frankly, the quicker we can get these games played and get through the season, the more chance they have to complete the season. Um, none of us know though. Uh, I, I always say to try to sound like I know more than anybody else because nobody knows. Uh, we just use our best judgment based on the facts we have. Uh, and we try to share those facts and help people make good decisions. Sports are a big part of uh, 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 schools financial kind of makeup. What do you say to a school district that's really worried about the financial future? Well, look, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we have tried to make extra money available for schools through the, the CARES Act dollars that have been available to try to make these, these uh, environments safer uh, for, for student athletes and students in general. And uh, look, this is, look, this is tough on all of us. It's tough on schools and families and parents and small businesses. We're all uh, struggling to get through it. And we just have to have a, we have to have that spirit of teamwork all the way through our society right now. Uh, you know, don't be so tough on each other. Be understanding. Try to be an encourager to help people get through the tough times. And, and uh, you know, we try to do our part uh, to, to help support schools and, and student athletes. And I, I do believe that hope is a huge, huge factor in getting you through any tough time. And I think that young people and families and Ohioans in general need sports to have that hope, to have something to look forward to on the weekends. And, and uh, I think that sports can play a major role in, in helping us all collectively get through this very difficult time.